light show that I'm getting. Look at that. I am, I am very... <laughs> I love sparkly things. <laughs> So I, I'm going to entertain you with this light show for a moment. Look at that. That's incredible. I love it. I feel like I'm in some kind of movie or something. All right. Well, anyway, so I wanted to come on today to talk about what keeps us from change. Because I think a lot of, a lot of us, most of us, right? want something in our lives to be different. Whether that's a different relationship, a different work issue, a different story with our health. Um, I imagine that if I were to ask you, you would immediately know, you could name at least one or two things that you want to have different in your life. Thing, changes that you're craving and they're just not happening. And maybe, you know, I think the older we get, the more chronic that is. Like, yeah, I've wanted this to be different for a long time, and it still isn't. A uh, story from my own path. Um, so years ago, when I got divorced, I, I took a year for just plain grief and recovery, you know, like just to just to get my heart back in order and and you know get through that essentially the depression that br that grief brings um it just wasn't something i had expected to happen and it really rocked me that experience so after that first year i started you know really in earnest doing some personal growth work again and um, the first year I think I called you know how you can like put a theme on a year of what you're gonna focus on the first year I called my year of love and money and I thought those were the two areas that I really wanted to heal um, I, you know, since I had just gotten divorced, I really wanted to have a different experience of relationship, you know, a true love story. And I knew I had some issues back from the dating days. I had known that when I got married. I thought, oh, huh, I'm getting together with somebody for the rest of my life, and I guess I'll never have to finish fixing up <laughs> the issues that I know I have in the dating arena. And then I did. So <laughs> then I, I had to confront it again, and that was okay. Um, and then in the money front, you know, going from a double income marriage with a person who earned over six figures, that was my ex, to just being by myself as an entrepreneur in a relatively new one, that was intense. And I had a side hustle, and even still it was kind of like, Mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna make it, you know, every month, like, oh, um, but I knew I had some good stuff to offer, so it was like, keep on keeping on, and I've realized, even though every year since then, and I did lots of different transformational works, and lots of processing, and thinking about stuff, and talking about it and learn like ahas and learning it's been an epic journey and uh, so I what I've realized just recently is that even though I've had different different years where I had different focuses since then I've still kind of been on this love and money journey I've had other relationships I've had better financial years and harder financial years since then, um, but there's still something I've been trying to crack, you know, something that I've really been trying to change. So those are my two, my two things that I have always been putting energy into and, and seeking change in, and I'm, I'm sure you have yours too. Uh, maybe there are those arenas, maybe there's something else. But um, I was talking to a client today, one of my guidance clients, and 
she had a really epic conversation with someone in she's in relationship with and a lot of the cards got laid out on the table and and it's big and she was impressed with herself and so was I I was like you did this great work and she was like yeah I yeah I mean it's there's still a lot of stuff to do but we're getting there and it's this is big this is a big difference and what I said which was given to me to say just sort of intuitively um, was the change this is there's there's a key that I kind of want to unpack here. It was like change starts coming as you start doing it internally, and then the external world starts to reflect it back to us after we've been doing this internal shifting for a while. She hadn't tried to start that conversation, nothing like that. It wasn't intentional, it wasn't planned. Uh, it just kind of happened, but that's what I experience is, is we change ourselves internally, things outside of us start to shift. And I think this is why we, um, I think this is why we, we don't change, actually, why, why a lot of us don't actually action into or, or produce the change that we say we want. Because it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like we've all been balancing. Have you ever tried those? I can't remember what those were called. Remember for a little while they had those like balls and then they had the plastic rim around them and you would sort of balance on them like this and they probably still have them in gyms somewhere like these balance ball things. And you could sort of get yourself on it, but then it's like, don't touch me, don't talk to me, I can't breathe, like I have to hold really still, right, in order to not fall off. I think that's how a lot of us feel, like I've just barely got this life thing by the tips of my fingers together here. And if I start adjusting anything, it's all going to fall. It's all going to fall apart. I'm not going to be able to keep it together. I think we're all really concerned with keeping it together. <laughs> I think that's part of the problem. We can't we can't step into that kind of change and keep it together all at the same time. You can do parts of it, I guess, but yeah, when you're when you're trying to find a new balance, you're gonna fall off balance. You're gonna be messy a lot more. Um, I think some of you may have seen the video I did previously uh, last week where I talked about me and my mess. I'm in a uh, connection right now that's very messy for me and I don't even actually always like it but I know I trust that being in the mess is part of where my growth is coming from so what keeps us from the change we want I think is a lot of times not like kind of on some deep level understanding that we don't have the skills to navigate that kind of change the reason that things are changing for that client of mine is she wasn't, in some way, she wasn't afraid to step forward into that difficult conversation because we've been working on the skills to have difficult conversations and to support herself and to know how valuable and trustworthy her own senses are. So when that conversation started coming up, she didn't shut down or block it off because she had some skills in place to move forward. It wasn't a plan, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't um, prearranged or even set. Like it was just like she just like she said it like she said it was she said it was very like, yeah. That's that's kind of what happens. You start changing inside, and the opportunities start percolating up, percolating. Perkling's not a word, but it should be percolating, arising, peaking, <laughs> perkling up. The opportunities start coming up. Uh, and that's what I find, too, is um, the more that I have built skills inside myself and stepped into transformational experiences, by which I mean things that are magical that I can't necessarily explain with my 
mind and my words, but that have a deep feeling impact. Um, you can't really explain why seeing an epic sunset changes or relaxes you, but it does, right? And so transformational work feels kind of like that too. There's understandings and knowings that can be given to your physical system, your nervous system, your heart and your soul that create a different sense, a different feeling that you retain. So that's my theory about what keeps us from the change we want is it's, it's oftentimes feeling like I'm, I'm not willing to be messy and fall apart or go off balance because I've barely got it together right now and I don't have the skills to deal with what happens when I walk into this mess. When I, if I deliberately step into this mess, how in the world am I ever going to get myself out? How am I, how am I ever going to get back on balance or put it together? So, um, I think that's what keeps a lot of us from moving forward. And I, I also think that's what makes a lot of people not as successful as they want to be when it comes to personal growth books or coursework where there isn't enough support um, because they're trying to give you new steps to take, new actions, but they're not supporting you with really building the skills and the, the solidity of self to be able to handle the change that will inevitably come when you start actioning. Um, that's part of why I do what I do the way I do it. Uh, when I teach Power Embodied, which is starting up this Thursday, so there's a couple spots still open if you want to grab one. Um, it's all about how to step into difficult conversations, how to engage in conflict deliberately and skillfully. Um, and I teach it as a live virtual class because I don't want to just give the information. I want to give people a chance to practice and ask questions and be messy kind of in that safe container of our, our small group and support them with um, just a sense of, you know, being able to do it, it being okay to be in the mess, uh, modifications and tweaks on how they're going to attempt things it makes it much more doable. And that's, that's how my guidance work works also. So that's, that's the kind of support that I think change requires. And it's what I source for myself when I need to step into messy change in this messy connection that I have with that friend. I'm, I'm getting other support <laughs> because if it were just me and my brain trying to have an argument about how I was supposed to do this new thing, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, I hope that's helpful. I wonder if it brings you any ahas or new ideas. I'd love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you later.